Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In this video we are going to define the geometry asset class which we can use to unpack imported mesh data. Okay, now that we have everything here, we can write an import function for this create primitive mesh that we wrote a while back so that we can call it from the level editor to create, for example, a plane for us. So let's go to the primal editor and here in our DLL wrappers, I'll create another file that will contain the functions for the content tools. And like we did here for the engine API, this content tools API will be a static class and we use the content tool DLL to import the functions that we export in that DLL. Now looking at what the signature is for this create primitive mesh, we need this scene data. And this one is an input parameter as well as an output parameter, because if you look at the structure, you can see that we are giving geometry import settings as an input parameter. And then after we create our geometry, the output will be the content of this buffer and the buffer size. So therefore we need to create a class that contains these elements and then also use it as an input and an output parameter. To do that we can use this in out attribute for the parameter and then we need to create a class that is called scene data and also one for the primitive initialization information. Let's start with the latter because it's simpler. If we look at the primitive mesh, we can see what's in here. So basically let's copy and paste this over. And like I did for this engine API, I will have another namespace in here for content tools API structs that define these data types. Here we'll have a sequentially laid out structure. And now we need to define everything that's in here. So we need to define an enumeration for primitive mesh types. Now I've got almost everything that I need except this geometry mesh type. And that one I'd like to define in the file that's for the geometry asset class. Here in primal editor, I'll add another folder for the content. And in the content, I'll add a class that represents the geometry asset. And here I'll define that enumeration for primitive mesh types. So I had to fix a couple of typos there. We have the enumeration for primitive mesh types. 
and all the other initialization parameters that we need. And they are just a mapping of the C++ struct that we have here. So I can delete this now. Next, we need to do the same for this scene data type. Again, we have a pointer type for the buffer that we fill in in the C++ contents tool function and the data size, but we don't yet have this geometry import settings type. And so we need to define one. Looking at what we had for the geometry, the import settings are these. So we need to have a class over there for the C sharp site that has these members. And I'd also like to give them some default values. So now we have these settings and this function is ready to be called. But remember that we want to put the data that we get from the C++ side into the geometry asset class that we have. So let's work on that a little. For every type of asset that we have in the level editor, we will inherit from the asset base class. So let's define this class. So this is an abstract class and it inherits from the view model base. So we can use it to bind properties to our views. And for now, the only member that I'll give it is the asset type. And this asset type is just an enumeration that enumerates the asset types that we use in this engine. So now that we inherited from this asset base class, we need to implement a constructor. Okay, now we can use this class as a representation of a geometry asset file for imported geometry. And here we can create another function that has as its input a geometry, and then we can use that to fill in this data. So the things that we are going to do here could throw some exceptions. So I'm going to put those in a try catch block. The first thing that we can do here is to call this function to create the primitive mesh. Here we assert that the data pointer in scene data is a valid pointer and also the size of the data is bigger than zero.
Now we need to copy over the data from this buffer to a buffer here so that we can have the data here and then we can free up this buffer. This Marshall copy function copies the data in this buffer that was allocated by the code task mem alloc function into this byte array for us from index zero till the end of the buffer. So remember that we had this allocation call here and we wanted to free the memory that was allocated by this function in the C-sharp side. This is one way of doing that, but I would like to actually automate this freeing up the memory. So therefore I'm going to make this class inherit from iDisposable. And after we implement this interface, we can call its dispose function to dispose of any resources held by this class. Now we can free the memory in data by calling dispose. Note that calling the finalizer of this class is suppressed. The finalizer is the method that looks like a destructor in C++ but is called rather differently in C Sharp. In a managed language like C Sharp, the finalizer is called by the garbage collector. By having a finalizer, the memory would still get freed if we would forget to call dispose, albeit at a non-deterministic time when the garbage collector feels like it. And to make this call automatically, we change this instantiation of scene data to using scene data. And this will make sure that whenever this scene data goes out of scope at the end of this function, or if we throw an exception, that the dispose function is called. Okay, now that we have all of this, I can try and build it and see if I made any typos. Apparently I didn't. Now I can give this buffer that we just copied to geometry and the geometry will do whatever it wants with it to extract any information that it wants. And therefore we need to write a function that will do something with this data. So here, what I would like to do is to partially unpack this data to see what's in there and then just try to make sense of everything that's in there and then assemble all the things that we need to save in some data structures and then save those to an asset file. Okay, looking back at the structure that we have in the geometry, we see that we have a kind of a tree structure in scenes. The scene has a name and an array of lot groups, which is a collection of all the objects that we imported. And right now, because we are generating geometry, this list will contain just one lot group. So we basically need to define something like this in the C sharp side as well. But we don't need to do this. We only need to work with the output data that we have here. So let's start by defining a class for lot group. Okay, now we have a lot group and the list of meshes in there and we need to define a class for mesh LOD. The lot group class represents a 3D object like this astronaut lady where each level of detail is a mesh lot and consists of one or more meshes. And if there would be more objects in the scene that we imported, then we obviously would get more of these lot groups. So next we need to define a class for the mesh.
again, we have here the size of a vertex and how many vertices we have and the size of an index and the number of indices and the buffers of vertices and indices. Further in mesh load, we also have the LOD threshold. So we need to create a property for that one as well. And that's all we need to unpack here in this function, a list of lot groups and mesh lots and basically unpack our scene so that we can see how many objects we imported and how many files we need to save. And this is where I'd like to stop for now. Next time we are going to unpack the binary data into the data structures that we defined today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.